In today's video, I'm going to show you some basic cinematography skills in Unreal Engine 5. So I have this little scene here, and I have a level sequence where I have a camera or a few cameras cutting through some music, and we get a cool little reveal of this portal. Now, I'm going to go ahead and right-click on my audio in my level sequence and mute it just so that we're not getting distracted by it. And if we play this back, we can see that we're doing a little camera dolly left to right, a little pullback, a little rotate, and another pullback to be like, hey, look at this portal. Now we're gonna leave looking through the camera view and we're gonna take a look at the rest of the scene. The first thing that we need to acknowledge is that some artists will always say, design only what your camera sees. And I disagree with that personally. Instead, my general approach is design as much of the set and the stage that you need based on what the viewer is gonna be looking at. So we're really gonna be looking at this one section of the scene and looking off into the distance, which is why we have a bunch of trees back there and some extra little accent lights. If I turn my camera around, we can see there's nothing, nothing there. So I didn't waste a bunch of time designing my entire set, just enough so I can have a couple different camera angles in my scene and get a visually interesting scene and set so then when I move a camera, it all looks relatively cohesive. So the first thing we need to do is make a camera. We're gonna go up to the three lines up here and we're gonna click on create camera here and add create cine camera actor. Click that and we can see that we have a new camera right there. I'm gonna hit F2 on my keyboard with that camera selected and we'll call this cam underscore tut. And I'm gonna go in and click on it and drag it up into this folder right here for my cameras, just to stay organized. If you don't know how to make a folder, you can hit this button. So with this camera added, I want to go ahead and add this into my level sequence. And now we have our camera there. I'm going to clean up my level sequence here by collapsing the camera tut and then selecting basically everything else by scrolling down, holding shift, right clicking with everything selected and go move to folder and set this to a new folder. So now we're only looking at our camera tut and some other stuff that I would just drag into the folder just like so and we can call this done as in we already did that part we don't need to do it anymore so we're not going to look at it so I have this camera tut right here and if I were to click on this camera icon right here we're going to be looking through all the other cameras that the cameras are set in our level sequence so we have this camera three which is in the done folder camera two camera four camera one and as I scrub through this, we can see that we're swapping between each of the little camera animations, but I want this first shot to be the new camera that I just made. So I'm gonna right click on this little clip and go to properties, camera binding ID, and set this to camera tut. So now we're looking through exactly where this camera tut was placed. Now the problem is when we have this little icon highlighted and selected, if we hold right click and try and move around our scene, it's not gonna move. This view makes it so that we're only looking through our sequencer. We can't really adjust the position of anything. So we're gonna unselect this and we're gonna go to perspective up here and go to cam tut. And now we're looking through our main camera. And if we hold right click, we can fly around, move around, etc., etc. So what I'm first going to do is I'm going to hold right click and then I'm going to scroll my mouse wheel backwards towards me and I'm going to position where I want this camera to begin. And I thought it would be kind of cool to do a little bit of a camera movement with this little lantern in the start of the scene. So I'm going to move my camera down and then I'm going to just kind of position this. But we can see here that we're getting a lot of field of view of our scene. We're really seeing a lot of stuff. And what I mean by that is if we hit G on our keyboard to hide all the other game assets, we're seeing all the trees, all of the sky and the portal. And it does to an extent set the scene, but I want this first shot to be a lot tighter. So what we need to do is change the focal length. I'm gonna scroll up to the camera tut and I'm gonna go to my current focal length. And I could set this to 35, but nothing's gonna happen. And the reason why is when we're piloting this camera, we're moving it around, but to actually view from the camera's perspective, we need to click on this camera icon right here. So with all that done, now we're getting a much tighter shot and I need to readjust my composition to be exactly where I want it now that I'm looking through the correct perspective and focal length. So with all that done, before we go any further, hit Control Shift S to save early and save often. We're looking through our camera and what we want to do is 
do a little camera animation. And the first thing I'm gonna do is take my playhead of my sequencer and bring it to frame zero, exactly at the very beginning. And I'm gonna hold control and mouse wheel forward. And that's gonna bring it much tighter into our scene and then right click and move our sequencer so that frame zero is closer to the left side of our level sequence. Now with the camera touch selected, I'm gonna select this little arrow drop down menu and I'm gonna add a keyframe to the transform property. So I'm gonna hit this button right here. And if you don't see this transform property, you're gonna hit the little plus sign right here and make sure you add a transform. But we don't need to do that because it's already right there. With that keyframe made, I'm gonna scroll forward just a little bit. Let's say I hold control and mouse wheel backwards, right click to move our level sequence and scroll and just frame out to let's say frame 40, 52. And that's because we are doing this camera move up until the end of this camera cut. So a little bit beyond frame 49, that looks like, is gonna be enough keyframed movement for this camera. So I'm gonna now hold right click in my viewport, and then I'm just gonna use my Q to bring the camera down just a little bit, and hit the A key to move slightly to the left, and really just move my mouse around while holding right click to really frame up this shot. Now. If I release that and I release the right click, we can see that there's a keyframe added right here. And that's because I have auto keyframing turned on. So if you have this button turned on and then you go to this drop down menu and select one of these properties, it will add a keyframe whenever we change a property of a selected object. Right now I have it set to key change. So if any property that changes, it'll add a keyframe to that property. I'm gonna close that. And if I hold control and mouse wheel backwards, right click to frame up this little animation we can see now that I have two keyframes on the sequence and if I move my playhead and play it back we have a cool little movement moving from right to left and a sort of tilt upwards now from a cinematography standpoint this looks fine but my eye and my soul doesn't quite like it just yet. And the reason why is it is a little intense. And one of the big things about good cinematography is that subtlety is key. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to this frame one, and I'm gonna take this keyframe here and copy it and paste it. So this is the end destination. And instead, I'm going to move just barely to the right and bring this down just a touch and now it should be a lot softer let's hit the space bar to play that back that is a lot more subtle now one thing i don't like about this camera move is that it is eased and sometimes eased camera moves are not what you want so if we hit this button right here it's going to bring us to our curve editor we can see that we have our little keyframes on the left and the right and we want to get rid of the E. So I'm just gonna make a box around all of these keyframes right here. And I'm gonna move my mouse up and hit the linear interpolation. And we can also just hit the four key. You can see the little keyboard shortcut as you highlight over that button. Now I'm gonna make sure that I have my rotation property selected. We can see that we have a little ease there as well. We wanna select those keyframes and make sure that we linearize them. So now if we play this back, it's a little bit more subtle and it doesn't speed up halfway through the movement. So I'm gonna close my sequencer curves. I don't need that anymore. And now what I wanna do is add a little bit of a rack focus. So a rack focus is basically we focus on one part of the shot and then we change the focus to another section of the frame. So to do that, we're gonna to go to our manual focus distance here and we're gonna add a keyframe at frame one or frame zero. I'm gonna scroll this all the way back until our little lantern in the scene is in focus, just like so. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to the very last keyframe and I'm going to bring the focus out. Now, one of the things that's important to know is that if we were to play back this animation, we might not actually get into the focus of the portal until the very end before the camera cut. So I'm actually gonna bring the focus a little bit sooner in the frame and then I'm actually gonna crunch this first keyframe for the focus a little bit sooner. It's gonna be a little fast for this camera cut, but it might work. Let's play this back by going to the very beginning and hit spacebar. We can see that, hey look, 
we're getting into focus of the little portal, but it almost gets a little blurry. The problem is that when we use just this value right here, it's going to be really finicky to actually adjust our focus. So I'm going to hit control S to save, and then I'm going to scroll into my camera tut settings and find my focus settings. So if we go here to this little drop down, we have a little eyedropper next to the focus distance. We can hit that and we can select an object in our scene. Now you have to make sure that you select something that is opaque. If I select anything in the center here where there's particles and magic and stuff, it might not catch. So I'll just select the portal right there. And now we're going to see much sharper focus on that portal. So now if I play this back, we got a little rack focus, a little camera move. Now it's just a little dull because it does do a little hard stop, but the big thing about good cinematics in Unreal, filmmaking, Blender, whatever you're using, it's a sequence of shots. So from here, you would then select this button, which is your camera sequence or cut, and we can see how this shot connects to the next shot. As we pull back in our level sequence, we can see we have these other camera cuts, and if I hit the space bar and play it back, we got one cut, two cut, three cut, and four cut. Looks pretty cool. And the value of this is having multiple shots in a little scene can really help tell a better story. So while I did cover how to animate a single camera, when it comes to making your little cinematic artwork in Unreal Engine, think about the other shots in the scene and what you're building in your set and your frame to create a cool little animation. I hope you learned something. If you did, let me know in the comment section down below. If you have questions, comments, concerns, comment section is down there for that as well. And I'll leave you with the final tip, and that is eat one gram of protein per pound of body weight, and you make some. Goodbye, my friends. Bye.